Hey, welcome back. It's Brian with Radical Prep. Uh, we're doing the January 2015 uh, integrated algebra test. This is number 37 on part four. It says the rock solid concrete company has been asked to pave a rectang rect uh, rectangular, rectangular area surrounding a circular fountain with a diameter of eight feet as shown in the diagram. Now we got the picture here. Find the area to the nearest square foot that must be paved. Okay. So when you get a question like this, you're looking at a big, a big rectangle minus a circle. That's going to give you this shaded region over here. So anytime you want a shaded region, it's the big shape cutting out the little shape. Okay. So to do that, I'll, I'll write that down actually. So we're actually looking at the, let me get ready here, the area of the rectangle minus the area of the circle. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is find out the area of the rectangle, and that's that's pretty easy. It's going to be uh, 36 times 15, and that gives us what is that? 36 times 36 times 15 is 540. So 540 square feet, but I'll, I'll remember that. So now the area of the circle, we've got what does it say? A diameter of eight. So I'll put that in there. I can draw it there on test day. That's a diameter, ooh, I draw that kind of bad. Diameter of eight, which also means that that's gonna be a radius of four, right? So we have a radius equal to four, and we gotta know our, area, or our formula for our area of a circle. So the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. So we can pop in the four there, right? So that's going to be 4 squared is 16 pi. Okay. And now we're going to do 540 minus 16 pi. All right. Um, and we can just punch that in the calculator. You might have a TI-84. 540 uh, minus 16. Let me see if I can figure out where the heck pi is here. Um, I can't even find pi in my own calculator. You know, I'll just do 3.14. Uh, why can't I find it? Oh, there it is. Um, hold on one second. You know what? I'll just do that for now. And we get 489. 489.76. Um, and that is the, the area of the rectangle minus the area of the square. And then what they want to... Oh, the, square, the nearest square foot. So we have to round, we're going to round that nearest square foot. So that's going to be 490 feet squared. And that's how you get that. It's just the area of the big shape, the rectangle, minus the area of the circle. Okay, so we got that. Let's move on. We'll go to the next one. And the next part says... Find the cost in dollars of paving the area if the rock solid concrete company charges. Okay, so I erased that too fast, but I think we said 490, right? So 490 square feet. That was our total. And they charge 895 per square foot. So this is just a multiplication problem. Times 895. And we can do. 490 times 895 and that gives us, oh, that's kind of pricey, that's expensive, 4,385.50. I'll put the dollar sign in there. Okay, cost in dollars. So um, I think that's all right if we leave it like that. So $4,385. Okay. So we're good. Let's move on to the next one. All right. Number 38 says solve the following system of equations algebraically. They give us two equations right here. So it looks like what we're probably going to have to do is plug in one into the other. Since this one is the simpler one, the one on the bottom here, we're going to take this information here, x minus 5. We're actually going to put it in right over there and solve the equation. That's how you do these. So let me grab my pen here. We're just going to write, since we're putting that in there, 
x minus 5 equals all that stuff x squared plus 5x minus 17 okay now let's solve let's bring everything over to one side plus 5 plus 5 that crosses out x squared plus 5x that's minus 12 last thing I'll do is I'll minus the x's from both sides minus the x so we get 0 equals x squared uh, plus 4x minus 12 sorry this is a little sloppy so once you get to this point this should look like a uh, you know a polynomial and you're gonna be able to factor it right so you want to draw your double bubble like that your butt cheeks as we used to say in school put your X's in because you know you gotta have X's in the front and then the question you have to ask is what do you multiply to get 12 but add to 4x well you should pick your numbers of 6 and 2 that should make sense now you have to figure out the signs well since this is a positive 4 you want your bigger number to be the positive one so plus 6 and that's x minus 2 let me just write that again neater x plus 6 okay and x minus 2 so what does that actually mean now what are your x values if I said what does x actually equal well it's gonna be the opposite of what's in the parentheses right because negative 6 plus 6 will make that 0 so x is negative 6 and x is also going to be positive 2 so here's here's the issue it says solve the following systems of equations so yeah we got pretty far and we're almost there we found the x values what do we have to find though we gotta find the y values so here's what we're gonna do we'll write on the top when x equals negative 6 so to find the y values, I could plug into the top equation, but I'm not going to do that. Why do that when your bottom equation is way easier? So I'm just taking my x values that I found and plugging them back into one of those equations, the easier one, to find the y values. So this one's going to read y equals negative 6 minus 5. So that's y equals negative 11. So that means that one solution, solution, one solution is going to be x of negative 6, y of negative 11. So now, what happens when x is 2? When x equals 2. So let's do that one. And again, we're using the easier equation, the bottom one. So that's 2 minus 5. I'm just plugging in right into here, 2 minus 5. So y equals negative 3. So now our other solution is x is 2 y is negative 3 and this should kind of make sense because if you look at the original equations ooh, lost my pen we've got a parabola and we've got a line so I don't have a graphing calculator on me but if I was gonna graph this with that horrible graph geez let's say I graph that you probably get a parabola somewhere and then you get a line so it does make sense that you have two solutions that's not always gonna be the case but it, it was the case here so two solutions, one there, I'll just put a little star next to it, and one there. All right, and that's pretty much it. Let's do the last one, and uh, then we're all done. And I just kick my printer, because it goes haywire now. Um, all right, last one. This is, there we go, number 39. Let's take a look at this one. Okay, so a problem like this one, you get this giant mush here of uh, all these expressions we want to simplify it right so the first thing that I do well I may immediately I see this division sign so when I see division I want to turn that into multiplication so I'm gonna flip it over all right so I'll I guess we could rewrite some of this 10 X squared Y over let's simplify this let's pull an X out X X plus Y okay times x plus y squared is going to be x plus y times x plus y okay over 2x and now division I'm going to turn the multiplication and I'm just going to flip the other one so 5y squared now this you should know this is a difference of two squares right an example of that would be if I gave you x squared minus 16 you should know that that's x plus 4 times what? x minus 4, right? So the same thing is happening here. You've got x plus y 
x plus y and x minus y. Okay, so now what can we get rid of? Well, let's start doing that. We've got an x plus y here, and we've got an x plus y here. We've got, well, there's an x on the bottom here and an x on the bottom here, so that will cancel out with those two x's. Um, and we've got an x plus y here and x plus y there. So, so far, let's bring it down. We've got 10y, that's on the top. Uh, all that's left here is a 2, but it's on the bottom. And all we've got here is 5y squared all over x minus y. Well, right, this is nice. So 2 on the bottom, I'll put this over 1 so it's easier to see. 2 on the bottom, so 10 divided by 2, that's out. That's going to be 5. So we've got 5 times 5. So that's, I'll put an equal sign here so people know we're moving down. 5 times 5 is 25y squared all over x minus y. And that's it. That's in simplest form. We can't do, we really can't do anything more than that. All right, so I hope you found this helpful. Uh, this was the entire integrated algebra test. If you got any more questions or you need some tutoring, definitely email me. All right, best of luck to you guys.